What's going on everybody? You have Tone here bringing you guys my team builder and battle for week 4 of season 2 of the PCL where this week we are taking on the Groningen Glades coach by Lux or Luca as he's known. Uh, be sure to check him out. His links and stuff will be in the description down below as well as all the other coaches in the PCL. So if you guys missed our last battle, we took on Danta and the LA Nito Kings, and we came away with a nice 1-0 win on the back of Blossom. Um, <laughs> so that moves us to 3-0 on the season, starting off the season very, very strong, top of our division, very, very solid start in my opinion. And we're taking on a divisional opponent in Lux and the Groningen Glades, which means we will be playing him again um, sometime down the road and the regular season progresses. So, as you also noticed by my team, I did make some changes to my team heading into this Week 4 battle. Uh, not specifically because of the matchup, but more so what I felt was best comfortable for my team in terms of synergy-wise. So, as you see by my, on my screen, um, I no longer have Latios, and I don't have Incineroar. I instead have the Hydreigon and the Ranunculus, and the reason being is... There were times where I really wanted to try to bring Latios in some matchups, but it just wasn't able to fit um, whatever I wanted to build at that point in time. And Incineroar, um, once I picked up Hydreigon, Incineroar became expendable, and uh, looking at what was available, Renuculus just fit the bill a lot better because it gives me another bulky um, Pokemon to rely on, and the combination of having that bulk plus the option of Trick Room was just very, very nice. And... In hindsight, Hydreigon was the dark the dragon I wanted from the from the get go from when the draft started, and luckily for me, Hydreigon got dropped, and I just jumped right on the bandwagon, picked up Hydreigon and Ranunculus, which um, surprisingly did is going to be doing a lot of work in this matchup here, as um, both Pokemon are going to be playing some important roles heading into this matchup against Lux. Um, just to run down his team really really quick. His team consists of the Blacephalon, Cresselia, Floragist, Cloyster, Drudagon, Grottle, Darkrai, Scolipede, Gligar, Magnezone, and Megalobony, with his Z users being the Drudagon and the Scolipede, and of course, Speed Pass is allowed. So, another matchup where I have to put up with the potential shenanigans of potential speed pass from Scolipede, but in hindsight, I'm not really that worried about Scolipede from an offensive standpoint, just because the team that I brought has the potential, I basically brought my a team in the sense that um, even if he tried to bring an offensive Scolipede, even Baton Pass, that I'm not really worried about getting 6-0'd or swept by a late game Scolipede, because Scolipede needs a lot of coverage to deal with my entire team super effectively, and as you see, I've brought essentially uh, four checks to Scolipede, quote unquote. Um, the first Pokemon you see on your screen is my primary response to the Scolipede. So I pretty much brought built like a, a bulky offensive sort of balanced team in hindsight, trying to um, make sure that I try to accommodate for every single threat that came off the top of my head while at the same time not trying to leave anything out at the same time I didn't want to try to bring my best stuff I want to say per se I still felt as though this team was very solid in the matchup um, pertaining to what I felt like my opponent would bring um, and just to run down what I brought as I'm kind of strapped for time so uh, first Pokemon you see on your screen, we have our Crobat with Black Sludge, Infiltrator, Brave Bird, Taunt, Roost, and Toxic with 244 HP, 188 Defense, and 76 Speed with a Jolly Nature. This is enough speed to outspeed the Blacephalon as well as an Adamant Scolipede. So the idea is to just use this as a sort of uh, backup check to Scolipede as Scolipede would essentially need Rock Slide to do any significant damage to the Crobat or Rocky MZ. And this is also a backup check to the Megalopony as it can come in, take a hit, and fire off a Brave Bird, knock out the Megalopony, even if he decides to be like a sub pass set of Infiltrator lets me bypass the substitute. And also I can hit up like a potential sub call mind uh, Cresselia if he decides to go that route. So that's pretty much the basis behind my set with the Crobat. 
Moving on, we have our Renuculus making its debut with Rocky Helmet, Magic Guard, Psychic Focus Blast, Toxic, and Recover with max HP, 196 defense, and 60 special attack. The the primary response um, idea with Renuculus as this is my main switch in to the Megalopony is I can take my Renuculus can take two adamant returns from Megalopony from full and retaliate with a Psychic again, Rocky Helmet chip damage off whenever it makes contact, that sort of thing. And Focus Blast is there for the Darkrai. Toxic is to catch the Cresselia on the switch and obviously recover for longevity. Next up we have our Hydreigon. This is my initial check to the Blacephalon as it resists both of its dual stabs. I can take any hit that Blacephalon wants to go for, scare it out with a um, dark stab move. But the boot, the real uh, appeal of this set is that it's a physical um, Choice Scarf Hydreigon set with Outrage, Superpower, Crunch, and U-Turn with 100 HP, max attack, 156 in Speed with an adamant nature, this is enough speed to outrun a max speed cloister, if I recall correctly. And the rest I just put into HP as the investment lets me outspeed Megalopony. Um, hit it with a superpower, I can pivot out on stuff like, um, put it out on the more bulkier stuff, get some more damage off that way. But like I said, this is my offensive and primary switching, I want to say, to Blacephalon. Um, obviously, if I get burned by like Fire Blast or whatnot, then obviously then Hydreigon will become a lot less useful. And this is also my main way of trying to dense, um, catch some like Magnezone if he's like a bulky or salt vest set. Because I know for a fact that Magnezone is definitely coming because his his um his defensive mons, the Cresselia and the Florages, don't like my Aegis Slash, and he has that Magnezone which can trap it obviously and get off some big damage on my Aegis Slash that way. So this is kind of a nice way of Chipping it down with superpower, potentially knock that thing out. Crunch for the Cresselia and the Blacephalon. U turn for momentum and outrage. It's just nice and spammable if he does get rid. If I can get rid of the Florges, potentially weaken the Cresselia. All of that good stuff. So that is the Hydreigon set. Next up is my Clefable, which is Life Orb with Soft Water, Calm Mind, Moon Blast, and Shadow Ball. With max HP, 188 defense, 44 special attack, 4 special defense, 20 speed. Speed is just general speed creep for something like Jordagon trying to speed creep on Invested Clef. Uh, the HP and the defense let me take two Jolly returns from Megalopony from full. And then I just put some um, special attack investment that gets some more pop behind my Moonblast and my Shadow Ball. The combination of the two moves hits his entire team neutrally. I want to say, and this is going to be my primary win con in this game, as if I'm able to get rid of the Magnezone and prevent his other mons from potentially setting up, then Clefable looks like it's going to have a very, very good shot of winning in the late game. Uh, so, that's pretty much it for Clef. It's nice for checking stuff like Lopany. It checks a good portion of his special mons like Florages if it's not Calm Mind itself, Cresselia to a lesser extent as well. Um, of course, I can't really get into a Calm Mind War with that unless I get Spadef drops with, um, with Shadow Ball, but that's, uh, something I'm gonna try to avoid if, if any, if at all with Miss Clef. So, next up we have Seismitoad, which is our Stealth Rocker here with Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Grass Knot, and Scald with a yeah, Guav Berry with max HP, 140 defense, 116 special defense with a relaxed nature. Uh, the investment, the HP, and the Spadef is enough to avoid getting to a KO'd by Scarf, Blacephalon, Shadow Ball after Stealth Rock, and I threw the rest into defense to better take hits from the likes of Megalopony, from stuff like Drodagon. Grass Knot is specifically just here to prevent uh, the Cloister, <coughs> prevent Cloister from setting up for free. Um, shell smashing, and then I have the Aguaf Berry, so if he goes for Icicle Spear, he tries to take me out that way, I have the Aguaf Berry, get back to, get back 50% of my health, and I can potentially live the, um, Icicle Spear at plus 2. Go for Grass Knot, if he's Sash, he's Sash. Um, if he's not Sash, or I'm able to break it, then it dies to Grass Knot, and even if he is Sash, I do have, 
um, this last Pokemon here, which is my Aegislash, which is a mixed defensive set with King Shield, Toxic, Shadow Sneak, and Flash Cannon. I know this has no way of doing significant damage to the Magnet Zone, but it's not like my Aegislash is going to be trying to some trying to deal with Magnet Zone one v one in any case. So. EV spread, max HP, 4 attack, 12 defense, 92 special attack, and 148 special defense with a quiet nature. The uh, HP and special defense investment lets my Ig Slash take 2 uh, Hydro Pumps from plus 2 Cloister after Rocks. And I can go in the combination of Flash Cannon into Shadow Sneak will always knock out the Cloister. Um, Toxic is mainly there for the Cresselia, so I can't, like, set up in, like, if it has enough Calm Minds, I can, like, try to talk to that thing, put it on a timer. Uh, Flash Cannon is nice for, is my best way of hitting uh, everything on his team neutrally. I didn't want to go for Shadow Ball, and then I'm Mono Ghost, and I have no way of dealing with, of hitting the Lopunny for any damage outside of going for Toxic and hoping the Lopunny is not, um, substitute. So... That's pretty much it for the team builder. I apologize that this is kind of rushed. I'm kind of pressed for time as it is. So with that all out of the way, let's just skip right on over to the battle and see how we did. Alright guys, so here we are with the battle against Luca or Lux and his Gronig and Gallade. And the first thing I noticed, well, he didn't bring a couple of Pokemon I, didn't, um, I expected. There's no Cresselia, there's no Florigis, none of that. Um, stuff, but he did bring the Magazone as I expected. Surprised that he brought the Scolipede, but in hindsight, um, the main thing that comes up with Scolipede is the potential of Baton Pass, which is not banned, but it's just annoying when you have to deal with Speed Pass and you have like no phasers or anything on this team. But in any case, he did bring the Magazone, the Megalopony, Gligar, Drudagon, Darkrai, and the Scolipede. So I figured I I thought my best I figured my best lead in this matchup would be Crobat because I figured um, he brought two of his potential three Stealth Rockers, the other one being the Grottle. I figured if he leads over Drudagon or the Gligar, I can at least taunt that thing turn one, prevent it from going for rocks at the very least, and then get off a Toxic on something well something not Magazone or Gligar or Scolipede, but. <coughs> I figured at that I figured at that point I try to get some damage off in some way, shape, or form on something in this game. So I also want to apologize in advance because uh, I am going to speed the video up a bit just because of the fact that this battle took a while and quite honestly, well, you'll see what happens <laughs> during the match. This is a 54 turn battle, so um, please bear with me in that regard. So. Let's just start the battle and see how we do. So, like I said, I'm going to lay over my Crobat here, expecting him to lead off with the Gligar or the Drudagon at the very least. So, uh, kind of caught me off guard here that he led off with the Magnezone here, which does make sense because my ground type is kind of hindered by um by Flash Cannon here. So, I'll make the hard switch into my Seismitoad here, expecting him to go for like the safe full switch or whatnot. But he just goes straight for the Flash Cannon turn one, no big deal. Except for the fact that he crit me turn one, which is not the best way to start the battle here. So he's going to switch out, go out into his Drodagon here as I'm going to go for the Earthquake here. Not trying to, um, I don't want to mess around here. This Magnezone is a big problem for my Aegislash. And it's the main thing stopping my Clef from um, potentially winning in the end game here. So now I'm going to go for my Rocks here as he is going to end up going for his Stealth Rock, I believe. No. Okay, so he goes for Glare first. <clears throat> So now I see this thing has glare, and I'm like, okay, this is um, a little bit more problematic here. It's fine, though, as he's going to get up his own rocks now, as I believe I'm going to try to go for a Scald. Um, trying to fish for a burn here. I know I could have I EQ'd again, but I thought he would go for... I thought he would um, go Gligar on the Earthquake. So I thought he was trying to preserve some health on the... Um, on the Dredagon, but he goes for Dragon Claw here, knocks me into my Aguaf Berry, so I get back some health, and I'm going to get full parried. So, 
That sucks. I don't get no damage off on this Dreadagon. He gets back Lefty's recovery. And now I'm going to switch out here. Go hard into my Clefable here. As he's going to make a very nice play. He's going to glare expecting me to switch out here. Because he knows I need Seismitoad for the Magna Zone. So he's going to paralyze my Clefable. Which sucks because my speed advantage over this potential Dreadagon is now out the window. As he goes hard into Magna Zone. As I am going to fire off a Moonblast. Just because it was pretty safe. I have rocks up so something was going to take some damage here. So Magnazone is in. <clears throat> I'm pretty much forced to go back out into my Seismitoad here. As he is going to go for another Flash Cannon here. Um, get some damage off on me. Which I believe is a 2 a KO. I'm not entirely sure if that was a roll or whatnot. But he's going to switch out here. He's going to go out into his Gligar as I am going to get full parrot again. Yeah, I get full parrot again. Um, uh, Kate, uh, this is going to be a recurring thing. So he's going to defog here as I believe I try to go for Scald on this turn. So yeah, I go for Scald, try to get the fish for a burn on this Gligar here. Get some good damage off on it. I get a crit, no burn. Um, kind of sucks. So he goes for the roost here as I believe I'm going to try to go for I either go for scholar or another um, Start get my rocks up again Because at this point he's more pressed to um, get up rocks get a, rid of rocks as opposed to um, Me because I've I don't really care much for my crowback. My crowback has recovery as I get full parried again on the uh, defogs so now he's going to u-turn out with his um with his Gligar here, and I don't really care much for my um, Seismitoad going down here, as long as I'm able to get rocks up on the field, but I get full parried again. So, I'm forced to switch out, I'm going to go out into my Crobat here, because I at least want to get up rocks with my Seismitoad, and I don't want him to take out my Seismitoad without me trying to get up rocks here. So he's going to protect... As I go for a Brave Bird here, so I'm figuring the next thing he's going to do is either going to attack him with Rock Slide, or he's going to Baton Pass, and that's exactly what he's going to end up doing here. As he's going to Baton Pass with Skullipede, go back into his um, Magna Zone, and he is going to take the um, take the Brave Bird, which is obviously not going to do Jack, because I'm not invested. And, yeah, it just bounced right off Magna Zone, no, like, no, like nothing. So... Now I'm forced to make a judgment a judgment call, and I'm unfortunately forced to sack my Seismitoad here. But he's going to go for Volt Switch, which kind of surprised me, because I, I figured Flash Cannon was extremely free in this instance. But I'm, if I'm able to get up my rocks again, that's perfectly fine here. So get my rocks up, that's that's fantastic. It forces the Gligar to come in and defog again here, but Seismitoad... Um, Skull Pete's in once again, so I go back out into my crow back here. He's gonna dry baton pass this time back out into his Drudagon this time. And now I'm going to go for the um I believe I taunted this turn to force him to not get up rocks on my field yet. So I taunted here. Hopefully he went for try to go for stealth rock here as he did. So prevented rocks at the very least from getting up on my side of the field. And now I'm going to fire off a toxic. I'm a poison type. Can't miss toxic. So now this thing is on a timer which is fantastic as I'm able to take it off any chip damage for Hydreigon with Outrage. So now he's going to go for Gung Shot here. I think he expected me to go... um. Clefable here on the Dragon Claw, but now that I've seen this Dragon's full move set, this it can't really do much to my Aegislash, Slash. But I'm not going to go hard aging on this Dragon because that Magna Zone, which he's going to bring out right now, is still a big, big problem for my team. But I'm getting as much chip as I can, whittle that thing down as best as I possibly can. Because if I, I'm expecting, I expect him to go like. He, I think he went hard Magnet Zone because my, like, he's essentially to my entire moveset on my Crobat. And I'm not going to go hard into my Aegis Slash here. So now I'm forced to sack off my Seismitoad here to the Flash Cannon from Magnet Zone. But Seismitoad got up rocks, which shows the most important thing in this exchange. So now I'm going to go out into my Hydreigon here. And I'm going to go and click Super Power as he's going to switch out the Magnet Zone. Go out into his Gligar. Um, take the Stealth Rock damage, go for Super Power, um, ideally I could have doubled into Crobat, expecting him to go Gligar, because now he gets a free Defog, um, but now I'm going to go on to my Clefable here, and he's going to get the Defog off, so he doesn't have to worry about Rocks anymore, 
Um, which is fine. I'm going to try to get up a free Moon Blast. Because either way, he's going to he's gonna roost here. Get essentially back up to full HP. I'm going to try to fire off a Moon Blast here, which I successfully do. And it's going to do not as much as I had hoped. So now he's going to U-turn out into back into the uh, Magda Zone here because like it's... Like, it's essentially free at this point, but I'm still getting chip damage on this thing, but I get full parried for the fifth time this game. Not gonna stay in here, I'm gonna just go out into my Hydreigon, because this is now my electric resist, and it's a free Volt Switch for this Magnezone. Um, so now Magnezone Volt Switch is out, goes out into his, uh, Megalopony. <coughs> So now he's going to pull a double here. I guess he expected me to go out into, um, I guess he's expecting a superpower here and get a free um, uh, setup or whatnot. But I'm just going to U-turn here, go out into my Crobat, and this is essentially like a rinse repeat process here because I'm literally right back in the same situation. The only difference is I don't have rocks up anymore. My side is has gone, and he's essentially just going to be um, baton passing. <coughs> speed right back into Magnezone, but at the very least, I'm just going to try at this point to get off damage, because I lost my main um, weapon of dealing with this Magnezone, so I figure at this point, since the Scolipede is not really the biggest issue, um, Crobat's not really doing much else in this game, because I have Renuclus from Megalopony, I have other ways of dealing with the, um, of dealing with the rest of his team, but I'm still gonna go hard. I'm gonna go into my Hydreigon because, like I said, it's my electric resist. He's gonna Volt Switch out, go back out into his Gligar here. Essentially, it's gonna be a free roost or whatnot. So I'm gonna U turn. So I'm gonna U turn out, and I think I'm gonna go out into my back into my Crobat. Yeah, I go back into Crobat because, like, um, it was the most expendable Mon on my team. Everything else had some merit. He's gonna U turn out himself. Go out into his Magnezone again. And I'm thinking, okay, since Crobat is the least expendable member of my team, I figure it's in my best interest to stay in, try to get some chip damage off with Brave Bird. I know it's not going to be much, but any chip damage I get on this Magnezone would be nice for my Clefable, because that's essentially what I'm going to try to win with in the end game. And my Crobat's going to go down to the Volt Switch here, which is fine. I get Switch Initiative here as it goes out into his Darkrai. Which gives me a free switch into my uh, Hydreigon. I get up a free U-turn. As he's going to switch out his Dark Rai, go out back out into his uh, Scolipede. And yeah, I click Outrage this turn because I was already like on the back foot. Because I'm already down 4-6. I'm forced to Outrage here. Like he has, he didn't bring Florages, so. And the Magazone was already weakened, so it's fine. So I get confused here. I want to make a judgment play. I'm going to actually stay in. I'm still faster than the Scolipede, even though he's at plus two speed. I get break through confusion, go for the outrage, take out the Scolipede, which is great because now I no longer have to deal with no more gosh darn speed pass. But I'm still locking the outrage. We break through the um, confusion again. Go for outrage. Um, don't do nothing to this Gligar. He's gonna roost it off again. <clears throat> um, so yeah, this Gligar's going to become a big pain, but uh, my Clefable can't handle it in some retrospects. So I'm going to go make a hard read into my HS Slash here, because I know he's going to try to roost up to keep this thing around for my um, HS Slash. And now he's going to U-turn out here, um, and I'm going to go for the... I'm going to go for Flash Cannon here, as he goes out into his... Um, into Darkrai. I figured... If he went Magnezone instead, I could have flash cannon into Shallow Sneak, potentially knocked out the Magnezone that way. But he goes hard Dark Right, get off over half to this Dark Right here. And now I'm like, my Dark my dark Pulse resists. I'm not going to go Clef. I'm going to go into my Hydreigon. Because I know I could take, I know with my HP, I could take any one. I could take a Dark Pulse from this thing. But unfortunately, he crits me. Which is. <sighs> that's so annoying. Because I would have gotten up a free U turn. And now I'm forced to go out into my Aegis Slash, forced to take a Dark Pulse, which I really wouldn't have wanted to do here, as I'm now going to go for the Flash Cannon, we break, we don't get flinched, and we are going to take out the Dark Ride with the Flash Cannon, so 
Uh, the Dark Rise is down, but yeah, the ex like me losing Hydreigon and losing half HP on A slash was not the best um, of instance of matchups for um, it wasn't the best scenario for me. So now I'm gonna go go back into uh, Shield mode, King Shield up as he is gonna go for Thunderbolt here. So I'm pretty much confirming he is choice specs at this point. And now I'm out of range of a specs Thunderbolt here. So what I'm hoping is. I'm hoping that um, Flash Cannon into Shadow Sneak will knock him out. So, I'm going to Flash Cannon here. Obviously, it's not going to kill him. <clears throat> but I figured that Flash Cannon into Shadow Sneaking here was the better play. I could have made a double a read and double Flash Cannon. But he is going to actually go out into Megalopony. I really thought he was going to go Dredagon on the Shadow Sneak and I would die to Rough Skin. But... <laughs> I really don't know. I'm assuming that the Dredagon was not um, was not uh, rough skin. It was probably sheer force. So now I'm gonna make the play out into my Ranunculus because this is my Lopunny response. Um, he Mega evolves, and I believe he's just gonna go for substitute here. Yeah, he goes for sub. Um, I'm totally fine with that as I'm gonna go just keep spamming Psychic here as he goes for the return. <clears throat> Does a good chunk to my Ranunculus. Takes Rocky Helmet damage. I click Psychic, we are going to break the sub on this uh, Megalopony, and I'm just going to keep spamming Psychic until my, um, my Ranunculus drops, because there's literally no reason for me to risk Focus Blast missing, and he goes hard with or whatnot. Um, in hindsight, what I also could did was, like, go on for, um, Recover there, but I couldn't risk him, I couldn't risk him having Encore, and I am, um, and I go for Recover, he Encores me into Recover, and then... He's in the exact same situation. So now he flash cannons me for free. Um, takes out my Renuculus, which already served its purpose. I got into my Aegis Slash now. And I am going to uh, click flash cannon here. As he's going to make a switch out into his Gligar. And at this point, I'm just like, yeah. It's looking like a losing battle already. As he's going to, I'm going to flash cannon here, expecting him to switch out. And that flash cannon did absolutely nothing. <laughs> Um, and while in hindsight, I could have, like, gone and played around, gone into Clefable here. I'm just going to my Aegis Slash drop here, because I didn't want to go hard Clef to take any unnecessary damage from this Earthquake. So, Aegis Slash is down, and now it's Clefable against the world here. But, the game's already pretty, it's, the game's pretty much over, because he is just going to, um, sack off. He's actually going to make the play and sack off Drudagon here. Um, cause if he went hard Magna Zone and I click Shadow Ball, he, that was a, potentially a choke, but I get full parry just to add more salt to the wound, so that's like six times now. As now we get to fire off a free gunk shot, he connects, um, it's not gonna kill me, but it's gonna put me, it's gonna, a hundred that put me in range where I am just gonna drop the Flash Cannon now. Uh, well, I was gonna die to Flash Cannon anyway, so there was, like, really... Um, no sense in me trying to like call mine or anything because now Magazone comes back out. He clicks Flash Cannon, and we are going to unfortunately lose this game 2 0 to the Groningen Galades due to some untimely, very untimely para hacks and some very timely crits on my opponent's part. Um, uh, this is nothing against, um, against my opponent, obviously, but I was just so, so upset. With the amount of the the amount of times I got full parried in situations where I wish I didn't get full parried, and then the other thing that just kind of broke me was the dark ride getting the crit on my Hydreigon because I would have lived the dark pulse because he didn't reveal life orb or anything of the sort, and then I would have essentially gotten a free U turn out, but eh, it is what it is like. I, I'm not I'm not as upset now as I was back when I played this game. Like, uh, like thinking about it, I still felt as though I put myself in the best position to win the end game with my Clefable here. It just did not work out the way I had hoped, and uh, it's going it's going to be those games where like stuff aren't going to go your way. Like hacks is a part of Pokemon, and I did benefit <laughs> from hacks um, just last in the last game, so. I can't really talk too much crap about, like, me things not going my way, because things did go my way for the first three weeks or so. And this, it just, which is just a tough way to lose, man. It's just a really, really tough way to, to take that first loss with, um, Parahax and the, 
at the timely crits, but it is what it is. Three and one, we're still fun. we're still looking good. Um, we do play him again, so I am definitely looking forward to getting some payback on um, Lux later on in the season. But that's gonna be it from me, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. Regardless, if you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. My opponents' links will be in the description, as well as all the other coaches in the PCL. Also, a link to the Discord will be in the description down below, so you can chat with all the other coaches and all that good stuff. But I'm gonna get the heck out of here. Hope you guys did enjoy. And until the next time, guys. This is Tone signing off for now. Peace out.